What does Fenzilla specialize in? All right, so Fenzilla, it's a social application for Facebook. Um, basically what we do, we enhance and upgrade the Facebook mm -hmm. by providing special and unique uh, social applications sure. like blog, forum, wikis, competitions. Yep for the Facebook audience and beyond, because yeah. we're active not just on Facebook, but also on the web and mobile. Great. And the most important of what we do is actually we are able as an application, as a platform, mm -hmm. to acquire uh, the users, mm -hmm. to know their data, to know who they are, what sure. they do. So it's basically like today, most of the companies provide you like a like capabilities, yeah. like click on the like and be a fan we actually provide something that is beyond and uh, which is uh, more like uh, knowing who are the fans what they do right. their email their interest the like activity yep. um, and this is for lifting the engagement cool. this is for lifting uh, um, sales for the company sure how important is facebook to a digital media strategy fake Facebook becomes to be a country by itself with all their 750 million fans yep. and users, active users. Yep. So it seems like today uh, Facebook becomes to be like one of the main core strategies uh, for most of the companies that I know worldwide, globally. And also if we're going, if you're looking at the local perspective, internationally, not just in the US, we see that uh, Facebook becomes to be like one of the core strategies um, for driving fans, users to the website, um, creating knowledge on products. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely Facebook becomes to be an authority like by itself. Okay, look ahead a year or two. Is Facebook still going to be the main platform or who else is going to emerge? Who's going to be the game changer? Or I myself, I love Twitter. Who's going to be the main platform that we need to be on, let's say, a year or two from now? I think if we need to, to see what's happening right now, yep. It seems that Facebook is growing, but having a competition with Google. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter, unfortunately, I think what is happening right now, I'm a Twitter guy, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of spam that is actually we are getting there. And, and this is something that actually prevents me to be more active on Twitter because I'm getting so many spam um, as a Twitter guy who tweets a lot. Do you lot, think that's so. from password hacks or do you think that's from bots that you I think the bots, it is exactly when you actually tweet one to the other and they are trying to create more tweets uh, and to create more uh, audience and fans uh, surround it. So I think it's going to be problematic okay. unless they're going to uh, find a solution for that. Sure. So you mentioned Google. Are you doing anything on Google Plus yet? So we are all waiting uh, for Google to open their app uh, so we can actually be active on right. Google as well. Um, our technology is transparent so we can use it uh, for Facebook and also like yep. Google when it's open or other platforms. Yeah. So yeah, we're just waiting for them to open their uh, API. That's going to be interesting because Google has built a very interesting platform and they want it to be very transparent. They want users to use real names yeah. and then they want that one plus button to be all over the place. Correct. What do you think um, uh, a key benefit is going to be of companies who are incorporating Google Plus into their strategy? I think this is still premature like right now to see like where are the directions. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely the circles that they created, this is something that is very powerful sure. uh, for everyone, like for brands and for um, consumers or just regular fans like, like us. Sure. Um, but I think we need to wait and see exactly where they are going to because yeah. there was a huge um, spike with their audience, but it, it seems that it's a little bit stopped now and we need to see what's, what's happening. But. Uh, it seems that there are going to be like very interesting uh, waves in the market between Facebook and Google and yeah. on, on that. Well, they put a very interesting structure in place, so it will yes. be interesting to see. Definitely. Consumers are getting more and more savvy. They don't click on banner ads anymore. Um, they know that every click they make is being tracked. How do we navigate that? How do we keep ahead of the consumers and give them content that is meaningful, um, but yet still engage them with brands? Content is the king. Mm -hmm. And I think that content that is being created, good content, and this is, I think, that is how also we started our conversation. Um, if companies and brands create good content, mm -hmm. people will go to their mini website or to their landing page, they will read. And if the ads will be actually transparent with the context, um, I think the CTR 
the engagement level will be much higher than the point one that we are seeing, or even less that we are seeing today on the uh, on the banners. Sure. Uh, social media becomes to be like a core key for um, this uh, activity for creating content, yep. and it seems that uh, people love to to read. They love to act and to reply. Mm -hmm. And I think this is another key for how we can create the engagement sure. and maybe even to create a, a better CTR or better engagement with the, for the brand uh, when the context and the content is actually right. Okay, we talk a lot about best practices, you know, like do this, do this, do this. Yes. Can you tell me please two things people should not do? How are they gonna mess up their campaign? How are they gonna just lose followers? What are two things people should not do? First, don't bombard your uh, fans with too much messages. Yep. Try to be solid once a week, maybe twice if like even you are a hot brand, wait with your message, let them digest um, their, um, your activity and your message. So I think this is the first thing because we as fans and I believe that you are too and the audience, yep. Uh, we are all fans of brands and we want to be their fan, we want to, we want to know what they do, sure. but we don't want to be bombarded with too much uh, of uh, messages. Okay, so, I love it, that's a great number one. What else? Um, the second one, I think, um, we sh again, we need, we need to be focusing on the content. Yeah. Um, I think this is, the, this is the major key today on 2011, almost 2012, how we can drive the engagement and the right traffic uh, to be more interesting, more engaging, more appealing. So I think these are the two major keys for brands and consumers and fans. Yeah. Um, so you're saying don't area. do boring content? Definitely. So okay, don't, 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 don't bombard them with too much uh, text and messages yep. and try to make it very appealing, very interesting. Yeah. So basically, these are the keys. Can you tell me, what is your favorite campaign that you worked on this last year? We as a company actually worked on several campaigns for the last uh, few years. I think there is one that is very interesting that we as a company, as Franzilla, were involved in a global scale, which is a project that we did for Viacom. Yeah. Viacom launched uh, something very interesting. They launched a new channel for women. Mm -hmm. um, so they have, of course, Viacom have the MTV and now they have Blink. Yep. So we were chosen as a vendor um, actually to assist them for creating a multi-platform through the social, uh, engaging women mm -hmm. in different countries. Uh, the main idea is to provide them a single solution for a um, website, for Facebook, mm -hmm. and for mobile. Um, the idea is to have women talking about something that is very um, appealing and engageable for them. It can be makeup, it can be fashion, it can be TV shows, everything that is related for women's stuff. And this is like basically their uh, motivation for uh, creating Blink. So um, for us as, as a company, as, as a startup company, to see how a channel starts from the beginning, from zero, and to escort the process with a Moogle company like Viacom, this is pretty much unique. Yeah. Um, so and how's it going so far? Amazing. Yeah. Um, we provided them the solution for, it's a single full solution for um, the website and for the Facebook and mobile to yeah. see how it picks up, people are engaged, people are going to the Facebook or the website and to cool. see everything in, in action. Cool. It's amazing. And can you tell me just a few of the other clients you're working with? You don't have to describe the campaign, but tell me maybe three or four other clients you're working with. So we are very savvy with the broadcasters and, and actually we dominate. We are an Israeli company, Israeli technology based in Tel Aviv. So we pretty much dominate the Israeli um, domain. So most of the broadcasters in Israel actually use and utilize our technology um, we have like companies like Endemol with all their uh, shows like MasterChef so we have a great case study and great campaigns that we've been uh, launching for MasterChef in Israel mm -hmm. and right now we're actually expanding it uh, worldwide with other countries 
um, Better Place, which is an electric car uh, that making a lot of waves worldwide as an electric car that is the technology is from Israel. So another case study for B2B. So we are very savvy with different companies, different um, uh, campaigns. And I think this is amazing to see like how social really helps to lift the business for companies, lift their revenues. And, and this is what we are doing. Very interesting. I'll be interested Thank to hear you. more about what comes up for Fanzilla over the next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>